Hi friends, it's Deanna Willison from Our Blooming Catholic Life. And this is the last in our series of four books that we used in our video, East versus West. This is the Contemplative Rosary featuring St. John Paul II and St. Therese of, sorry, St. Teresa of Avila by Dan Burke and Connie Rossini. It includes the National Catholic Register's New Guide to the Rosary, and it is published by EWTN Publishing. What does the back of the book say? Pray the rosary like a saint. With St. John Paul II and St. Teresa of Avila as your guides, this book will show you how to transform the rote recitation of prayer into profound worship of Christ, drawing your heart to bow in awe before the triune God, whom the rosary reveals to us. You'll learn how to place every moment of your life before his throne, seeing in each one the mystery of the incarnation. You'll learn the difference between contemplation and meditation and how these great saints approached the reading of sacred writings, not as a mere intellectual exercise, but as a prayer. You'll also learn how to enrich your vocal prayer and how the rosary can unite vocal prayer and mental prayer in a way that can lift your heart to the heights of contemplation. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that last line. To look upon the face of Christ is the task of every follower of Christ, and there is no better way to contemplate. Contemplate the life of Christ than through the rosary. Read these pages, and you'll soon follow in the footsteps of St. Teresa of Avila and St. John Paul II, finding in the rosary a meeting point with God that becomes your first taste of a deeper union with him. If you want to know why I was making faces, it comes in the meaning between contemplation and meditation, so it is addressed in this book. Uh, what do we have? We have two reviews back here as well. Dr. Anthony Lills academic dean of St. John's Seminary in Camarillo, says it provides powerful insight into why praying the rosary can become a pathway into contemplative prayer and union with God. The book invites us to, um, sorry, this is from Bishop Thomas J. Olmsted, Diocese of Phoenix. This book invites us to move from speaking to adoring, from looking with the eyes of the body to the wondrous discovery with the heart. Saying the beads is a great beginning. Learning to rest in your Jesus's heart meets an even more profound longing within us to pay him homage and praise. Quite quite a bit of a review there. Let's see here. Copyright is 2017, printed in the United States of America. Except we're noted the biblical references are going to be the Catholic edition of the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, so not the RSV CE2, the original. English translation of the Catechism of the Catholic Church of the United States of America, the copyright 1994. Uh, this does include the Edito Typica 1997, so this, I believe, would be the green copy if you have that. Quotations from papal documents are taken from the Vatican website. This is a slightly different one than we normally use. This is w2.vatican.va. The quotations from St. Teresa of Avila's Way of Perfection and Interior Castle are from the collected works of St. Teresa of Avila, Volume 2, translated by Kieran Cavanaugh and Otilio Rodriguez, copyright 1980. Okay, I think that's all the things. Oh, wait, does it say whether it's available in other formats? It does not. Sorry. All right. Oh, wait, it does say there's a recording available. But it doesn't say anything about ebooks or anything. So I'm, I'm sorry I don't have that information here. Table of contents. Pretty straightforward here, friends. You're not going to get much more straightforward than that, are you? Again, I do kind of wish they had some things in bold. If they had the Joyful Mysteries example in bold or the Luminous Mysteries in bold, it would make them stand out a little bit more from the mysteries under their category. Um, so what do we have here? Introduction, the universal call to contemplation, staying co close to Jesus, attention and distractions, vocal and mental prayer, the contemplative rosary method, how to pray the rosary, then it has the joyful mysteries, the annunciation, visitation, nativity, presentation, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple, the luminous mysteries, the baptism of the Lord, the wedding feast at Cana, the proclamation of the kingdom, the transfiguration, the institution of the Eucharist, the sorrowful mysteries, the agony in the garden, the scourging at the pillar, the crowning with thorns, the carrying of the cross, and the crucifixion, 
the glorious mysteries, the resurrection, the ascension, the descent of the Holy Spirit, the assumption of Mary, the coronation of Mary, the 15 promises of Mary to Christians who recite the rosary, and the titles of the artwork, and I believe all come from the public domain. You'll understand that when we get in. So being a book using the um, St. John Paul II, of course, it includes the Luminous Mysteries. I know that is a stumbling block for some people. If it really bothers you, skip those for now. You can always come back to them later should you change your mind. Sorry, the microphone is being super wacky today. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I think it's stable now. Um, let's look at the introduction, how it's marked. We'll look at the layout of the book first, as always. If you want to see the content more, you can skip ahead. But here's how clearly it is that it is the introduction. Do I wish that this was in bold? Yes. I mean, they put this letter in bold and they put this line in bold. I don't see why they couldn't have put that type in bold right there. Um, they constantly do have some contemplative and meditation. So they have words like the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Can you see that some words are in italic? It's not really oppressive, at least at this point. Um, it's just a little word here and there for emphasis. It does have footnotes. Um, just trying to see. They do appear to be sequential for the entire book, so they aren't going to start over every chapter. It starts with, with number one. It does tell you CCC stands for the Catechism, so here out it's going to be CCC. So whenever you encounter it the first time, it may be written out like this one here. And then it's abbreviated in its next use. See, it's going to tell you hereafter. It's RVM. Okay, it does have some bulleted points, so that makes it easy to see those as well. It appears to have the title of the book on the left-hand side, and then the section there, center, middle, page number. Let's see if the center, middle, page number continues throughout. Yes. I see it everywhere in the book except for when there's an image. That's the only place I don't see it. So center, middle of the page, bottom of the page there. Let's go on. Let's see. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. I didn't even notice it because there's so much of it. So this is a quote. This is a quote. These are big block quotes. See how they are indented. They didn't change the font size or spacing, so it doesn't stand out as much that it is a block quote, but it's easier to read, so that's a tricky decision to make there. Oh, let me see if I can turn that light on just a smidge more. Sorry, as the light goes down outside, the lighting changes in here, and I need to adjust. Uh, lighting is something I'm working on in this new space. Let's see, is there anything else we need to know? It does look like those section headers are similar throughout. Let's come back. Um, it does, how, where does it change? It changes as we get back um, to the second half. So it does show you, this must be the how to pray the rosary they were talking about from the Catholic register, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't see it footnoted, so I'm not 100% sure on that. There is something um, we've discussed before. What's a little odd is it has, says the concluding prayer and there's the concluding prayer down here. This one, when it talks about a concluding prayer and you're within the decade, there are suggested concluding prayers for each decade as well as the normal concluding prayer for the rosary. So I found that part just a smidge confusing, but it's not the end of the world there. Um, prayers of the rosary are included. Including, it had said in the beginning, you could do the sign of the cross, prayers for the intention of the Pope and the Apostles' Creed, which I have never prayed. Oh, that's done on one. Interesting. I normally don't do prayers for the intention of the Pope till I come back. So normally I do the opening prayers, uh, the creed and all here. And then these three or Hail Marys for increase in faith, hope, and charity. And then I work my whole way around during the normal way. And when I come back, these three beads are the ones I use for the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be for the Pope. So it is set up slightly differently than I'm familiar with. They don't even have the three Hail Marys for faith, hope, and charity. So that's, that's interesting. 
They do have you using the Fatima prayer. Again, that is something that has become a sticking point for me. When you say Fatima prayer in regards to the rosary, please be specific which prayer you're talking about. There are five prayers of Fatima, friends. We should be saying all five. I'm a firm believer in that. You know, I'm a big fan of Our Lady of Fatima. Um, calling us to reparation, why not? Because if we can make reparation now, let's do it. Um, so the fat when they say Fatima prayer in here, they are referring to the Fatima decade prayer, which some people have starting out with, oh my Jesus, but I have heard that that is a poor translation. And so if you hear people reciting it in Latin, there are actually two versions, one that starts with oh my Jesus and one that does not. Um, so there are differences in translations. They say that the oh my Jesus is not, not um, from the original uh, the way we have it in Portuguese. It does also have that you could do, as you hold the crucifix, sign of the cross, prayers for the intention of the Pope, and the Apostles' Creed, or the sign of the cross in Psalm 70, verse 1. And so that is given um, over here. Oh God, come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. Uh, I've never seen people listed out as where it comes from. It's normally just there. It's a very, if you do any form of... Uh, the Liturgy of the Hours, you are probably very familiar with. Oh God, come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. Um, okay. It's pretty easy to tell when we're finally at the Contemplative Rosary section. If you're a person who uses these sticky tabs, you may want to use them. They're still marked here from our East versus West discussion, but I may move them so that I have it for each set of the mysteries of the Rosary, perhaps. I may have it if I want that chart, because it's a little bit different than I've seen before, I may want it there. Just saying. Um, when we get into the scripture and reflections, let's see what this is going to look like. There is going to be an image for you to meditate on, as well as you can announce the scripture or the mystery here. There's a longer explanation of what it is, the fruit of the mystery, and then there's a scripture. You can see the scripture is pretty easy to read. It's not in italics. It's not done as a block quote or anything silly. It's right there, which makes it super easy to read. And then it does have the Hail Mary. Now, I'm not sure where in this you need to say the Our Father. I've discussed that before. It's a little unclear. So say it's somewhere in here. Maybe between the title and the fuller explanation. That could be a nice place for it. I'm, it's just a little unclear. Um, you can see where there are reflections and where is the concluding prayer for the decade, not for the entire rosary, because you see then there's another one here, another mystery. Um, that's the basic layout the book. Oh, right. There's something here yet at the end. We had seen that. Sorry, it's getting a few pages. It's hard to flip when there's very few pages left because we end... I will show you that even once we're in here, it's showing it doesn't tell you the particular set of mysteries you're on or the particular decade you're on. It's just telling you it's the contemplative rosary with scripture reflections. And then at the very back of the book, page 135, so after the rosary, is the 15 promises of Mary to Christians who recite the rosary given to St. Dominic and Blessed Alan de la Roche. That is footnoted that there is an imprimatur there for that and then the titles of the artwork and that they are all taken from public domain in case you really liked those images they're letting you know that and then bam it's the back cover that's the entire book so let's go in and look at a section a little bit more in depth and it's often good to read the introduction just a smidge Let's see here. The rosary, as seen through the eyes of two contemplative Catholic saints, will no doubt change your life. One of these saints, Teresa of Avila, was a 16th century Spanish nun and a doctor of the church. The other, Pope St. John Paul II, was a 20th century philosopher, actor, and poet, whom God chose to lead his church in a powerful way that has led many to call him St. John Paul the Great. Why was the contemplative life so important to them? What did contemplation mean to them? St. John Paul tended to use the words contemplative and contemplation in a wider sense than Teresa did. For him, contemplation was often synonymous with meditation. But even meditation has a precise Catholic meaning that is different from the way non-Catholics use the word. 
The Catechism of the Catholic Church, compiled during John Paul II's pontificate and under his direction, speaks of meditation in this way. Meditation is above all a quest. The mind seeks to understand the why and the how of Christian life, in order to adhere and respond to what the Lord is asking. The required attentiveness is difficult to sustain. We are usually helped by books, and Christians do not want for them. The sacred scriptures, particularly the Gospels, holy icons, liturgical texts, texts, the day or season, writings of the spiritual fathers, works of spirituality, the great book of creation, and that of history, the page on which the today of God is written. For Catholics, meditation is the act of thinking about or pondering, but it's not thinking about just anything. It is the pondering of the face of God in Christ. This reading and reflecting on sacred writings is not a mere intellectual exercise. It is prayer. St. John Paul writes in his apostolic letter, Rosarium Virginis Mariae, on the Most Holy Rosary, to look upon the face of Christ, to recognize its mystery amid the daily events and sufferings of his human life, and then to grasp the divine splendor definitively revealed in the risen Lord, seated in glory at the right hand of the Father. This is the task of every follower of Christ, and therefore the task of each one of us. We can sum up the Pope's words in these ways. The Christian's task is to look upon the face of Christ, see the mystery of the Incarnation and the details of his life, recognize God's majesty revealed in the risen and ascended Lord. John Paul II goes on to say, In contem contemplating Christ's face, we become open to receiving the mystery of the Trinitarian life, experiencing ever new the love of the Father and delighting in the joy of the Holy Spirit. Meditation begins with pondering, but it does not end there. It st ends with standing in awe before the grandeur and mystery of God's quest for union with us. This adoration prepares the soul for a greater union with God, a union that will be accomplished by God's drawing the soul into a realm of infused contemplation. And then it goes on to the distinctions between mental prayer where, from where we speak from the heart, vocal prayer. And we're going to get into what exactly they mean by that and what contemplation means. And it goes on, that is on page five, and it talks about that in enough detail. Then the universal call to contemplation. And it's saying, wait, 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 isn't infused contemplation just for a few choice souls, you know, the, the high saints, the doctors of the church? No, it really is called for everyone. But and it's going to quote some Vatican II documents for that and letting us know that while we're all called for it, only God can truly make us holy. He does require our cooperation. Staying close to Jesus is the next section. What to do with attention and distractions. So there is practical help in here as well, not just throwing you to the lions with a picture in some scripture. Nope, they're helping you out what to do with your attention as well as distractions. There's then a section on vocal and mental prayer. It was discussed very briefly in the introduction. There's a couple more pages here. And then the contemporary contemplative rosary method. And they're going to give you some meditation. So there are some opening prayers. There are the mysteries, the Our Father, and the Hail Mary. It does discuss that a little bit more, as well as when you get to the section on the Glory Be, it is small, but it's telling you on page 37, and again, I've covered this before, Adoration of the Trinity, says St. John Paul II, is the goal of prayer. He notes that the Glory Be, the high point of contemplation, should be given due prominence in the rosary. In public celebrations, we should sing it. The glory be transports us to Mount Tabor, the site of the transfiguration, where we can say with St. Peter, it is well that we are here. It's so easy to overlook this short prayer, making it an afterthought. However, the incarnation in sorry, the incarnation we ponder in the rosary took place so that we could worship the Holy Trinity and purity of spirit. Perhaps we should linger here a moment in silence rather than rushing on to the next prayer. The church also asks us to bow when we pray the glory be during the liturgy of the hours. Bowing when we pray the glory be in the rosary can be another reminder of the importance of this prayer in a physical reverence that provides another aid to our desire to be fully engaged as we pray. How to conclude each mis mystery and then the concluding prayer, closing prayer at the end. Oh, it's concluding prayer and closing prayer. Is that really listed in, in the... No. In the diagram, they call them both concluding prayer. It was like, did they really call one the closing prayer and one the concluding prayer? And I missed that. No, they didn't make that distinction. Again, that might have been tweaked in the editing and somebody didn't catch all the instances of it. 
Um, should we look at some of these reflections? Yeah, let's do that. So let's go ahead, look at the nativity, you know, the incarnation. The nativity, Jesus is born in Bethlehem, and you can stare at this lovely image when you start it, but then it's a little difficult when you get to the other pages, which is possibly why they have that in the back where you could actually order a print or perhaps pull it up on your computer to look at the image while you're continuing to read it. Um, it's lovely if you have a group, if someone, if you have someone who can be very teacherly and hold it like this, but again, that only works for the first page. Hmm, that is a little bit of an issue here, but you can flip back and use the image when you're doing the Hail Marys. I don't know. That's a little tricky. I hadn't noticed that that slight error logic uh, before. Hmm. It's interesting. You'd almost want your copy to come with little pieces of this, little prints in a pocket in the back that you could pull the print out when it was time. Just saying. So you would say here, the third joyful mystery, the nativity. I would, I, I would say the Our Father here. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Fruit of the mystery, poverty of spirit. Scripture for meditation, Luke 2, 4 through 17. And Joseph also, you know what, I'm going to skip that. I don't want to keep you here. And then it does have the Hail Mary written out here. Why? Because after the word Jesus, this is like a St. Louis de Montfort has this way. We're saying a small phrase this decade here. See, an extra phrase after the name of Jesus. We would say, Jesus, who was born to you in Bethlehem. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. So don't skip over that. It's in italics. It's added in there for you. What are the reflections for this mystery? The all-powerful God condescended to the weakness and smallness of a helpless baby to redeem us from the bondage of sin. She could ponder that. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So there's not ten. So I guess, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. I thought there'd be ten. I honestly did. The innkeeper could have been transformed by saying yes to Christ. How often do we refuse him in our lives because we are too busy or have other important things to tend to? Uh, what are the consequences of our no, our refusal to give God all that we are and all that we aspire to in this life? The angels shared the good news first with those who were lowly and despised. We can count on God's answers to our... Wait, were shepherds despised? I don't think I knew that shepherds were despised. If that is true, I didn't know that. Uh, we can count on God's answers to our prayers, but often in unexpected ways, like a stable instead of a room. The wise men demonstrate extraordinary effort to give their best to God. Do we give him our best time, best efforts, best talents, or just what is left over? The angels sang glory to God in the highest. We echoed their words at every Sunday mass and at the end of each decade of the rosary. The concluding prayer is pray for us, Mary, cause of our joy that out of love for Christ, we may detach our hearts from material things and the esteem of the world. You could also use, um, not just to pray the rosary, but if you are a first Saturday, just saying first Saturday, if you are a devotee of the first Saturday devotion, your 15 minutes of meditation on one or more mysteries of the rosary, this is definitely a book that you could take with you on first Saturdays. I may just, you know, casually leave it sitting around when I go. That is a good point. That is a really great thing that you could do. That's, that's pretty interesting. I like that. Um, that's a great thought. So what do you think of this book's friends? Have you used it before? Has it aided your prayer life? Have you found any difficulties where I did or were they not stumbling blocks at all? And you figured it out and I'm just being, you know, nerdy Deanna here doing her book review. <laughs> Put it in the comments below. And as always, friends, like, share, and subscribe. And let's not forget our closing uh, blessing of Brother Leo. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Benedicat tibi dominus et custodiat te ostendat dominus facium suum tibi et miserator tui convertat dominus voltum suum ad te et dominus bonus det tibi pacem. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti.